What's up team? We're continuing with part four of our retaining wall design example. We're done with global stability and now we are going into the actual calculations to size our steel and make sure our concrete is adequate for the stem wall of our retaining wall. Hope you like it, let's get in there. We have the same retaining wall structure that we had worked on previously. If you're unfamiliar with this, pause the video real quick and head over to, I think I'll leave it up there. My first videos where we went over global stability checks, making sure the, the overall size of this thing works out for the conditions that you have. Well, what's the first thing that we need to do here? Uh, change the allowable loads to LRFD because we are designing concrete uh, elements here. So we need to get to strength level forces. And secondly, last time we were doing our global stability checks and we were taking moment you know, down here about that, that red circle, we analyzed this with loading down to that point as well. Well, now we are going to be checking for uh, shear and for bending moment on our stem. And for shear, we're gonna be checking about, if I change the blue, this plane here. And similarly, that plane we're also gonna be checking for bending moment. So what does that mean uh, for our loading? Well, for our loading, this means that we can change and reduce it to only analyze it to the top of the base, this right here being our base. I just pointed to the bottom of the base. The top of the base is right here, or the point at which we're analyzing our structure for this shear and moment. And this ultimately means that our HA is going to kind of slide up and also decrease, and our HL is also gonna slide up a little bit and decrease. So we need to refine these values at, as well as our XA and our XL. So let's go do that. Let's find this new value here and here. Our new HA is going to equal the following. And the two pieces of this equation, this is the force portion of the equation, and then this is the moment arm, or what we called last time our XA. Now remember, these are allowable loads, which we need to convert to strength level loads, or LRFD. And per the ASCE 716 chapter two, lateral earth pressure, denoted as a big H, has a 1.6 factor on it. So we're gonna slap that on there, and then we're gonna solve all of this, which gets us 64,000 pound feet. And this is moment, because ultimately, I know I said uh, equals HA, but this portion here is your HA. And like we said, that next portion here is your X bar. So um, this HA and this HL, and then your new X bar. Boom, boom. Okay, similarly, HL is going to equal the following, 19,200 pound feet. And uh, remember that this is also for load cases. This is the live load. The surcharge on the structure is the live load. And that is also a 1.6 multiplier to get it into LRFD loading criteria. This gives us MU or ultimate moment on our stem wall equal to 83,200 pound feet, which also breaks down to, if you divide by a thousand, get it to 83.2 kip feet. And again, this is per foot of wall. All right, um, moving further here, I'm gonna add some additional information. F prime C, the compressive strength of our concrete, I'm going to be using 4,000 PSI. All right, let's check the bending capacity of our stem. Well, first I'm gonna give use a little trick that I haven't done on the channel before to determine the size of steel that's going to be required for our system. Information that we've been given is the full thickness from the example problem is an 18 inch thick wall. And then I'm gonna slap on a two inch cover. Now you might be saying, hey, what about three inches? You know, this is against soil. It is not bearing on soil. When you have soil up against, well, it sort of is bearing because it's retaining. I guess you could make the call with whether to do three inches of cover, of clear cover, um, or two inches of clear cover. I'm gonna use two inches of clear cover today, um, but let me know in the comments, obviously, if, if I've done that incorrectly. And then you also need to take into account one half the diameter of your bar to get the full clear cover and, or the full D, excuse me, because ultimately we want to find D to run our calculations for our concrete. And I am just going to straight up say, well, combined here, I know our bar is never going to get larger 
than a one inch diameter. That would be a, a pretty beefy bar. Um, so I'm gonna conservatively just say, you know what? I'm gonna call this three inches total. And it may be a little bit less than that, but I just know that if I run into things down the road or the loading changes or um, I need to sharpen the pencil, I know I can go back to this point and get a little bit more capacity um, if I sharpen my pencil here. But for simplicity's sake, I'm running with three inches and that's why. Now, with this, um, instead of me saying, well, I wanna try number eights or I wanna try number fives at six inches or number, you know, number tens at, at to 18 inches, I'm going to instead do a different process and let me know what you think about it. Because I learned this while I was studying for the SE, which ultimately saves you time so that if you guess incorrectly with choosing steel size, you, you ultimately would have to redo it and which takes more time. So this process gets you the steel that you need basically right away with doing a quick, one quick iteration um, to kind of lock in on an appropriate amount of steel for your element. So check it out. Um, I'm going to consider, we are considering this thing a, a slab, if you will, a one-way slab. So that means JD, we are going to approximate a 0 0.875. Um, from this, we're gonna say AS equals the following equation. All right, we have all of these things. And as we start this, we are going to assume phi equals 0 0.9 and we will confirm that at the end. So let's plug everything in. Some quick things to remember. I have k uh, kip feet for our moment demand. We need to get that into kip inch. So I have a 12 there. And then for our rebar, we're using a standard 60 KSI um, yield strength. And all of that kicks out to 1.41 inches squared of steel per the section that we just analyzed, which was a 12 inch one foot strip of wall. So you can also add this on and say per foot of wall length, but you don't have to if that confuses you. Sometimes I put it there, sometimes I just remember in the back of my head, one foot strip, one foot strip. So next we're gonna solve for A using the following equation. And we have all of these things. So let's go ahead and plug in. That gets us 2.07 inches for A. And now what we want to do is recalc our J. That equation, J equals D minus A over two. Real simple. Spits out 13.96 inches. And now we want to divide that number by D, which is 15 inches to get it in terms of JD like we had in the beginning. So that gets us 0.931D in comparison to at the beginning, we guessed 0.875D. So you can see now we're off and now we want to rerun this calculation, the, the AS calc and the A calc um, with this new variable. So with our adjusted uh, J, we now have A, S, and A as the following. All right, and there we have it. And let's just make doubly sure of this. So let's recalc J with our new numbers, divide all of it by D. So the equation would be, would be that. And that spits out 0.935D, which is approximately 0.931D that we had previously. So they converge to one another until they are equal. This is close enough where I'm saying we're good using AS. Um, if I go highlight this AS and this A, we're okay to use those because these two numbers are so close to one another. It's not worth your time to reiterate one more time. You are so significantly close that you're good to go. Well, what do we do with this now? Well, now we have our steel. So 1.32 inches squared of steel is required per foot of wall for our um, for our vertical bar, so our lon longitudinal bar, the, the rebar that's doing all of the work to resisting that bending moment um, on your stem wall. Well, what does that break down to? Well, we can now confidently say, well, what kind of steel do we want to use? Well, let's try number eight at six inches on center, a number eight is equal to 0.79 inches squared per bar. 
You can use your little Chrissy CRSI cheat sheet student detailing card, or you can um, look up in the back of the ACI manual. There is, or ACI code, there's a bar chart. Um, you can look this up very easily online. We all know this already. I'm, I know I'm blabbering on here. Um, that ultimately gets you an area of steel equal to 1.58 inches squared per foot, which is greater than the 1.32 inches squared per foot. So we are okay. And unfortunately, uh, if we went down a bar size to number sevens, that wouldn't get us there. Um, you, you're saying, hey, why did you just assume to do six inches on center? Well, I ran a couple quick, quick iterations that you're not seeing on screen here, but you may, it is often that you, since you're calculating a one foot strip of wall, that you start off with saying, well, what size bar do I need? Just a single bar in that 12 inches, which would mean a 12 inch on center spacing. Well, that would mean you need to have a single bar, which gets you 1.32 inches of steel minimum, which is a very large bar. So for this application, just because you can, doesn't always mean you should in engineering. You wanna consider constructability, ease, which is ease of construction, um, and how readily available materials are. You don't wanna get the most complex custom, you know, thing just because it calcs out as the engineer. You need to be realistic with, with the capabilities of the contractor. I saw that number and said, a single bar isn't gonna work. Let's reduce the spacing so we can get our hands on some smaller bars, which are more malleable, easier to use, easier to carry in the field, to erect, yada, yada. Little background info for you. But what about, AS min, we still have code requirements. You know, we can always just design for strength. And a lot of the time we wanna say, oh, good, I'm done. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's code compliant. So AS min per the ACI is the following. All right, let's plug in for both of those. And we find that this one's controls, because again, it's the greater of the two options. This is our greater value. And now you might be saying, well, what? What the hell does that mean? That, that 0003, that's not inches squared of steel. Well, now you just take that number and you multiply it by our base width times our depth D. We know our base width is 12 inch strip of wall and we know that D is 15 inches. All that spits out to 0 0.6 inches squared of steel per foot of wall, which is significantly less than the required steel that we needed just from a strength design. And it's certainly less than what we've provided. 1.58 inches squared per foot. So we are okay. We meet minimum criteria, that's great. But I also told you one last step by doing this J process is we need to confirm that phi equals 0 0.9 so that we have a tension controlled member. Well, first we need to get beta which is equal to 0 0.85 when we are using an F prime C equal to 4,000 PSI. Beta is all dependent on the compressive strength of your concrete that you're design using. And that is in the ACI table 22.2.2.4.3. I am using the uh, 318, the ACI 31814. I know the new one is coming up in this new code cycle, but just Bear with me, that's what I'm doing today. Next, we need to find C, which is equal to A over beta. That gets us the following, which spits out 2.29 inches. This A we solved for up above here, so I don't think it's this new thing out of nowhere. Um, right here, boom, okay. And now we need ET, which is equal to the following equation. If we plug everything in, we get the following, which spits out that right there. and if E sub T is greater than 0 0.005, then we know that phi equals 0 0.9 and we have a tension controlled member. And all of this is kind of recapped in the ACI in uh, like 21.2.2, it goes over this process. Area of steel for temperature and shrinkage reinforcement is the greater of these two equations here. We again know that we have a yield strength of a rebar of 60 KSI. Make sure in this equation that you plug in 60,000, not 60. As you can see here, they have 60,000. 
So don't make that mistake. And ultimately, if you have a standard rebar of 60,000, really these just cancel out and it's the greater of, so this is the one that we're gonna be using. Almost always you remember that as you do this over and over again, that your temperature and shrinkage steel is just 0 0.0018, but don't always do that. Make sure you understand where it comes from. And you multiply that number times your gross area of your section, AG, that gets us 0 0.39 inches squared per foot for our temperature and shrinkage steel. And additionally, we have spacing requirements uh, denoted as S as the following. 5H or 18 inches. H being uh, this number right here for us. So five times 18 is clearly a very large number and it's the lesser of. So we know that the maximum spacing of our temperature and shrinkage reinforcement is 18 inches. 0.39 inches squared per foot. So we could do a number six at 12 inches, which satisfy us when you do number sevens at 18 inches. So that's also good. So there's a couple things. It's up to you to decide, just make that engineering judgment call. All right, lastly, we are checking our shear demand and making sure that the shear capacity of our stem is adequate. And just like that team, another piece of the puzzle complete on a retaining wall journey. If you like this uh, video and if you found it informative, leave a like down below, really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, and I see you in this auditorium again in the year of 2023, there's gonna be some issues. So subscribe, but you don't have to, obviously. And if you wanna take it a step further and support the channel, why not join Team Kesteva? Every contribution just goes directly into the channel, but always remember that my content is free, so don't sweat it if you don't got the cash. That's totally fine. I just want you learning, bettering yourself. That's the real reason for this channel. Peace.